During the late 19th century, as settlers rushed west to discover unknown territory, river transportation was the heart of the New World, and Madison, Indiana became a center of industry. We're midway between Cincinnati upriver and Louisville, Kentucky downriver, and both of those cities had large saddle-making industries, and they needed saddle trees, which are the bones or the frame that a saddle maker attaches the leather to to complete the saddle. There were 12 or 13 saddle tree factories in Madison, and they were producing upwards of 150,000 saddle trees per year and shipping them, as far as we know, worldwide. Madison attracted residents from far and wide, including German immigrant Ben Schrader. Schrader started his own saddle tree company, working until his death in 1909, just as the dawn of the automobile threatened the industry nationwide. Adapting to change was really critical for the Schraders in keeping this business going. One of the early things that they did during the First World War was they got into glove manufacturing for a while. In the 1930s, they got into making clothespins, but you know, by the 1930s, there was really not a great demand for saddle trees. The Schraders, for some reason, were able to hang on and they became the last of the saddle tree companies in Madison of the 12 or 13 that were here, and one of the very last in the United States from the 19th century. Between 1878, when the company began, and 1972, after the last of Schrader's sons passed away, the business produced between 300,000 and 500,000 saddle trees in over 250 styles. When I first walked into the factory, I felt like I was walking into King Tut's tomb because it felt like the Schraders had just left. There were shop aprons still hanging. There was a lunch pail by a machine, saddle tree parts that were cut 20, 30, 40 years ago were still sitting next to their machines. The original sawdust was on the floor. It was so significant that the National Park Service sent its uh, Historic American Engineering Record uh, emergency team here in the 1970s to document the site because they weren't sure if there were any saddle tree making factories like this left in the United States. So they wanted to at least take some photos and do some drawings of it and do some recordation in case it should disappear. With no remaining relatives, the estate gifted the factory to historic Madison in an effort to conserve the business's legacy. The organization did just that, treating the entire factory like an archeological dig, gridding each square foot and tirelessly cataloging each item down to the sawdust on the floor. They sifted through not just the Schrader history, but industrial history overall they worked to save much more than just the buildings. The Schraders left such a rich site behind, they left parts and pieces in various stages of production by looking at those parts and pieces of wood that were carved and shaped with different tools and machines, we were able to identify some of the processes in a step-by-step -step process as to how they made their saddle trees. And so over the course of a couple years, we were able to actually make a saddle tree, one saddle tree. Ben Schrader would have fired us because you know, we weren't producing three saddle trees per worker per day, which was their kind of production rate. Again, the idea was not only to preserve the buildings, but to try to, in some way, shape, or form, understand and preserve some of the manufacturing processes. Those are the sorts of things that disappear over time, and this is the only site in the nation where we are able to preserve the craft of the American saddle tree maker. Usually when you go to a museum or a historic site, it's the history of the rich and famous. The Schraders were neither rich nor famous. They were middle class business people with a small factory out in their backyard. So it's something that most Americans can relate to. People walk in here all the time and say, Oh, you know, this reminds me of Grandpa's barn, you know, his woodwork shop. And all of a sudden, they are making the connection from something in their lives that was meaningful to something that they're seeing here today. We don't have history books. That stuff is kind of boring. But these places just bring history to life. And you just feel like you can almost reach out and touch those people that worked here. And so that's one of the things that makes this place so unique and important.